What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023. And today's a very special day in my family's calendar. Today is the birthday of Connor. Yep, Connor Dyack, his birthday today. Check him out on his YouTube channel where he's killing the Central Florida used car market with his company, D&D Auto Sales. Check him out. Wish him a happy birthday and smash that thumbs up button. Show him some love, guys. Connor Dyack. I'll put a link in the description box down below. He tells it like it is on how to how he buys cars and sells cars and how he takes care of Air Force Nun. <laughs> Good old Air Force Nun. Also known as Pipe Doctor Nun. Today we're heading to a service call right down the block right here. We're installing a, uh, a new Douglas Mini Split system and replacing another one. Let's get the Joe on the road. Peter, I know it's not your birthday. Today's Connor's birthday, but I brought you gifts. Hold on. This is a DJ, DJI Mavic Pro drone. Yeah, I know you like flying, so now you can fly you're like, what your feet are still on the ground. I don't want you killing yourself. All right, let's get the show on the road. I'm here. Peter is here with the equipment. And there's Daniel. I just saved us 15% or more on our car insurance by switching to Geico. No, I'm just joking. They just wanted to totally change the scope of the job and move the lo unit, location of the indoor unit in the basement to a place where we'd be digging for days to run the piping and then deal with drain. You don't want to put a condensate pump unless we don't have to, but we saved the shit. We saved the guys. Let me disclaim what we're doing. Okay. Now, we have, we have some nice, beautiful equipment here. We have a Bosch IDS 2.0, another Bosch IDS 2.0. We even have a Bosch tankless T9900i SC tankless water here in the basement. We have the equivalent of the Bosch trifecta. Okay, what we're doing is, see this line set? We're keeping that. You're welcome. We're going to replace this condenser, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna put a wall mount bracket, which I have in my truck, it's not here. We're gonna put one right there yeah. for this. And on the other side, or maybe even right here, on the same elevation, we're gonna put another one right here, and that's for the basement zone. We're replacing that one because there's a refrigerant leak in it, and the indoor unit is so disgusting, right? It's like a frat house up in that attic. It's so disgusting that the only real way to guarantee that the smell coming out of the stench coming out of this head unit is gonna go away is by replacing it. And I'm just keeping it real because that's how effing filthy it is. It's that bad. And when you turn it on, it smells like. It smells like a mixture of gay farts and like just a cesspool of like, oh, it, it smells like a horrible indirect. We got our cesspool pumped yesterday. You got your cesspool pumped yesterday? So no more bubbling out of your butthole? <laughs> they keep getting the cesspool pumped and it, nothing changes. So clearly it's not the cesspool. My parents just assume it's the cesspool. You know what they need? They need BioClean. They've put they something something in. They what do they put in? in? You gotta use BioClean. Even though I hate the living balls out of these people, statewide supply because they're Nazis when it comes to their BioClean. It's good stuff. Keeping it real. All right, Peter. Let me tell you what we're doing. This is the Fujitsu 15,000 BTU uh, ductless indoor evaporator, the high wall. Um, this is the basement we have. That was unfinished. You remember, we did a lot of work here. We did so much work here that, <laughs> I love it how they hang clothes. We put this uh, Burnham IN6 in with the uh, two tappings off the top. This is before we did Pro Press, Mega Press. This was yeah, the guy had accidentally left the boiler feed on and flooded out his whole house. <laughs> uh, we put that in, right? Um, all the custom duck work all the way back there. All right. Um, the, the tankless. We didn't put this in. And is it still wet here? Oh, today's not going to be a good day with my big black things. Is that working right? Huh? 
little bit of moisture there still, but the way they put in the, the trap and standpipe there, well, no standpipe, well, that, <laughs> it leaks out. Anyway, I didn't put this in, someone else did. So today, we were going to, oh, this is where the, the flying shit occurred, yeah. remember? The poop <laughs> went out there. Yeah. Uh, we were going to put that unit right here. All right, that was the plan. But now the homeowner is putting a TV on the wall here and there's a sectional couch here and they don't want it there anymore. They actually want it all over there. And the outdoor unit is going over there and this is the finished basement. And I'm like, well, if you want to spend the money, then we'll demolition, you know, all the soffits that they built and we'll run the line set and then we'll deal with the drain. <laughs> right? So I convinced them from there to right here. And if you look right here, opposite is this opening. This is the son's bedroom. Of course, what this, look at the great egress window we have right there. Egress, it's perfect. He can definitely escape out of that. He's a, smaller than you, by the way. No, he's actually twice the size of you. <sighs> window, window. That's where it's gonna go. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. And go. yes, Daniel's outside recovering the refrigerant out of that Fujitsu 18,000. All right, Peter, are you ready? I'm reading the installation manual. And people comment, that maybe it's too high to the ceiling, right? The installation manual says one and 15 sixteenths of an inch minimum clearance. That's, pretty, pretty That's less than two inches, okay? So we are going to take the wall mounted bracket and I'm gonna put it, should I put it there? Or, I should hold this right there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a feel for how this is gonna look. Okay, let's go see how this is gonna look. So there that is. Here's that opening. I keep walking backwards. Hopefully I don't kill myself. And the light is horrible here. All right. Ah, uh, I sound like Peter now. Uh, you know what? Okay, yeah. I like it there. I gotta admit. We have one, two, three, four screws holding this thing down. This ain't going anywhere. Look, <laughs> that bracket is not going anywhere. We only had two to work with because there's a, a beam there, a beam there, right? But it ain't going anywhere. Okay, next. Let's get a tape measure. We're gonna mark off our hole for our outlet for our line side electric. All right, drain. so we have 115 millimeters. From there to here is 4.52 inches. Peter's gonna drill a hole with the uh, spider. I call them the opener set. These things, man, these things are, these things go through everything. <laughs> and I mean everything. Uh, they went through your sister last night too. Oh, <laughs> special shout out to the plumbing monster in Boston, Massachusetts. Check him out. His TikTok is sick. Guys, his TikTok is sick. Give him a lot of love. And he's got a, a rigid calendar wife model. <laughs> All right, drill that. You can go a little lower. A little, okay, right there, good. All right, make a hole. How's your hole? Pretty good. It's a nice hole, right? Peter, where are you? <laughs> you are. How high? Yeah. I was gonna clean my room, but then I got high. I don't know. Um, whatever you height you make that, we have to make the other one the same height. All right, so do right there. Yeah. No, not not too low. And plus, you know, if they ever need to do anything with this window, like an egress window, you know, yeah, I'll put it right there. Will our height interfere with the window there? We want to make everything in the same parallel. Uh, yeah. No, you'll be fine. I would take a measurement though. Maybe. No, you're good. Anyway, guys, Peter just did the disconnect. We're using this nice one by, uh, I forgot who it is. It's a nice one, it's got that circuit breaker built in right to it. We're adding surge protector. Someone commented on a video, um, the last duckless unit that we did, and it said, Mike, you do surge protection for your Bosch systems. Why not for your mini splits? Well, great idea, guys. Look at this. There is the Rector Seal RSH50. Speaking of Rector Seal, there's my Rector Seal mini split wall mount bracket. 
hell it does diverse attack fools. They're smoking crack, I tell you. All right, so we're preparing the, take some measurements for the wall mount bracket. It's gonna look really, really nice. And when we're done, it's gonna be beautiful, I tell you. It's gonna be beautiful. All right, there's one, there's two. All right, so she's way off. Not that way off, but way off visually. Lifting up the wrong side. You gotta lift up the other side. Lift up the other side, there's a little uh, adjustable feet that will push the bracket away from the house. Let me show you. That way you can make it look level. See? A little adjustable rubber foot there. You can spin it. I can't, I need more leverage. Need more leverage. There wow, you go. It's tight. That's what your sister said. Oh! Alright, so it's very tight, so we're using a, uh, the adjustable. Keep going out. Keep going out. Keep going. Okay. Try that. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Perfect? Okay, let's see what it looks like from afar. See, I know it looks a little off level from here, but it's dead level. It's dead level. Let's take a look at the other one. Perfect. It looks perfect. That means it's not. <laughs> Let's go see. Uh, hold on. Why does this level look all lop lopsided? There you go. It's a little bit off, but eh, good enough for this neighborhood. I'm just joking. Now it's perfect. All right, so the objective now is to take these two line sets, right? The half inch and the, is it five eighths actually? I think that's five eighths. The five eighths and the quarter inch, right? And bring that to right here. Now I know it looks like it's gonna be a stretch, but Peter's gonna grab the line set stretcher and we're gonna stretch that out a little bit. Okay, Peter, you know what that is? The line set stretcher? The line set stretcher. Do you know where the line set stretcher is in the truck? Is this a real thing? Nobody goes, no. <laughs> You're smart. See, he's learning. Fifteen. This is not the fifth. Eighteen goes here. Oh, see? Daniel, you should have noticed it right away. Facing that line set. You took the cover off. And you should have noticed that too. The eighteen. 18 is for the top floor, the third floor attic. The 15 is for the basement. Oh, Daniel. You're right, you're right, you're right. So I'm going to do something that I haven't done on this channel in a very long time, and that is actually use a torque wrench. I normally use the guns of my arms as the wrench, and knowing that I'm at between 36 and 45 torque pounds of pressure, four half inch flares. This is a half inch flare, right? I use the, the Navic flaring tool. This is the NEF6LM. They only make one by the way. So just type in Nav Navic flaring tool or I'll put a link in the description box down below if you want to get one. It saves a considerable amount of time when you're flaring. Now I know Daniel likes to use Nylog. I'm not necessarily a fan of Nylog, but I believe in doing what is best for my team, my guys. My guys like to use Nylog, let them use Nylog. I personally don't like it. If I put my flare, right, on there where it should be, right, and it has a nice, good, smooth connection there, this, this flare nut, right, will thread on nicely. Sometimes it goes on nicely, sometimes it doesn't, right? But if I'm not on there seated properly, we're not gonna have it going on smoothly. So I'm trying to get it on smoothly. I'm trying to find that happy medium, but there we go. Now, I did that without Nylog. Why? I don't like it. Is, but, is Nylog like, uh, is it to keep it from leaking or also is it a lubricant? A lubricant? It's a lubricant, mm -hmm. right? If you're, if you're considering it, using it as a sealant, you need to learn how to make better flares. True. Right? Because if you have a perfect flare, right, and a machined matted made connection, like kind of like a union, you know, we put we do gas work, things like that. Mm -hmm. 
right? They're both machined perfectly together. You don't need pipe dope on there, yeah, right? Just to help. Why is the purpose of pipe dope? You put, the, if anything, pipe dope is going to prevent it from, from becoming one with another. If you want to put pipe dope, put it on the thread so you can actually make it more tighter. Yeah. All pipe dope is, a lot of people say, oh, it's a sealant. It's actually not. It's yeah. a lubricant that'll help you make that connection deeper. Like I was inside your sister laughing. <laughs> All right. So now I have this yellow jacket. This is a 60, 65 zero. I've had this for a, a very long time. Um, they make better ones now, they're digital, but I don't use it that often, but when we put it on here, right? And by the way, it's in 26 because I don't know, because we're back to the metric system, not the imperial system. Yeah. Even though people are gonna say, oh, Woodrow Wilson signed an, an act. All right, so we'll put that on there. Can you hear that little click? Mm -hmm. That means you're at 40 pounds of pressure. Because we said oh, it, uh -oh. or you said it, 35, yeah, 40 pounds of pressure, right? I think it was preset. I didn't, uh, I guess that's why I, I don't know how that works. So, there's your 40 pounds of pressure. And you're good. So now you've tightened the specification that Fujitsu mentions right there. Look, flare nut. Half inch, 36.1 to 45 torque tightening pounds for N, whatever that is, right? There it is. You're like, oh, Mikey Pipe, you don't, what do you mean? You don't, like, what, what is that, whatever that is. Leave me up alone. Let's see you do it. Let's see you have a torque wrench. You guys are still using channel lock with your teeth. Okay. So that one's in. Now, the other one, we'll worry about that. What, what that looks like later. One thing at a time. The other one, this is that quarter inch, mm -hmm. right? And we want to make this as together as possible. So I basically want to cut this one. We'll cut that one right there, too. And it looks like crap, so let's use a knife. And let's just clean this off a little bit. It looks retarded. Okay, there you go. And let's, let's go there right there. Let's put this right here. And I'm going to show you start to finish. Using the proper tools of the job makes the job go that much easier. Okay. And no, I'm not using a, a what you would call it in there. Quarter. A deburring tool. All right. Yeah, you want to get that in there? Really? What? Okay, I deburred it. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Got the quarter inch for the NAVAC, NAVIC. Okay. So here's the quarter inch. I'm going to put that on right there. Right there. Perfect. Push that in there. Push down on it. Hit the button. Ladies and gentlemen, this takes a considerable less amount of time when you're using the right tools for the job. I'm not, I'm not mocking there's anything wrong with a, a manual uh, flaring tool. I'm not knocking that. But this is better. Embrace technology. Just like the plumbers. Oh, look what I did. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, Peter. It's your fault, Peter. Actually, it's their fault because I was trying to educate them. So now I'm going to teach them something. Someone's gonna learn something you, right now. You did, you did that on purpose. Someone's gonna, I did that on purpose. Someone's gonna learn something. You know that what those grooves are for on a tubing cutter. Well, if you don't know, now you're gonna know, right? There's my little groove. I'm gonna put that flare inside that groove and I'm gonna cut off the flare that I put onto this quarter inch pipe without the, the flaring nut. See that? And now I'm gonna take that quarter inch again, which is right there. You notice I didn't flare it. I'm not worried about it, you know, because you don't need to flare it when you're, when you're deburring it, when you're flaring it. That's just my opinion, right? It works for me. It may not work for you. Your mileage may vary. Just keeping it real. Take two. See? Uncut, unedited, raw. Now smash that thumbs up button. <laughs> okay. So there's that. There's that. Now, there it is. Now, what's the torque pounds for quarter inch? 11.8 to 13.3. Huh. So now we're going to take the much smaller one. I need the little tool. This little tool here. All right, we'll push in that little notch. Mm. Now, this is the right one? I think. It's the tiniest one you can get. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a little wiggly there, but it's all right, it'll work. That goes in there like that. 
So what do we need to be at? We need to be at 11.8 to 13.3. Well, there's 7.4 and there's 14.6. I'm gonna put it on closer to 14. Yeah. Lock that into place and let's be tightening. There it is. So we're done. Easy peasy. Smash that thumbs hey, up. Hey Daniel, button. you learn something new every day or experience a new adventure. Yeah, let's figure out how to set it though. Okay, very easy. Let me yeah. show you. See what says bottom lock, yeah, unlock. Unlock, unlock. So you pull that, unlock it. See? No, no, you're not looking. See? Yeah. Now you turn that and set it to where you need to set it to. All right. 10 after 11. What I've noticed is that this Bosch has periodically been spinning and you don't even hear it. <laughs> Using minimal amperage, it's beautiful. Love the inverter technology. Inverter, 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 inverter. Now, someone commented, and I, you know, I keep it real, uncut, unedited, raw, right? That we didn't put any t means of secure, secureness on the <coughs> direct burial, <coughs> excuse me. Um, communication wire so I always say let's do one best one better than the last mm -hmm. so now we have a connector there see there it is so that means moving forward all ones we do we're gonna have a connector there maybe moving forward oh the last <coughs> one was going to go BX yes maybe moving forward maybe the next stall won't be a Fujitsu Maybe to be a daikin. Do you like daikins? Do you know what I heard? Daniel? I heard that daikins are made in the USA. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. <coughs> They're also truly communicating. Did you know that? I put them in for Toriano. Are they truly communicating? They're, everything is identical to Except the only difference was it had this stupid adapter for both lines. Like, you know how, it's, it, like, you can use maybe 5 eighths and a half inch depending on the size of the unit you run. Yes. For, like, the bottom board. Yes. It was a single unit and it had those for the same size to size, quarter inch to quarter inch. Oh. But how's Dyke and Tech Support? I never had these. Oh. It can't be worse than Fujitsu. <laughs> Which is good. Really? You think so? Every time I, I don't have any issue. Oh, maybe you're special. Maybe they know me. They don't like me. Maybe. So, Daikin, if you're watching this video, you should reach out to me, maybe. There's a reason why these aren't Boshes. There's a reason why that's a Bosch, and that's a Bosch. But there's a reason why that's Fujitsu, because I like Fujitsu. But... If you're really made in the United States of America, well, I'm on board. Let's, let, let's leave it at that. But you have to have superior tech support, just like Kevin Durant. You need to have, you need to have tech support like Kevin Durant tech support, okay? Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right, so while Peter is wiring that one, we're in the vacuum process of this one. 64.5. 64.5. So, the question is, what will this Fujitsu 15,000 BTU, half inch and quarter inch, about how many feet? Maybe 40 feet? Yeah, about 40 feet. We had a little scrap on the 50 footer. Uh, what is the, what micron are we going to get that down to? All right. And the winner, the closest without going over. So, let's say we get to 19. If you bid 20, you lost. If you bid 18, you won. As long as no one's between 18 and 19. Okay? That's how it works. And it's on this system, not on that one. This one is, uh, everything's brand new. That one, we're reusing the line set. And we're just installing new equipment. So the closest without going over, I'm going to send the Pipe Doctor hat. An official Pipe Doctor hat. It may not be the new one, maybe the old one, so it's more vintage. It's worth it. All right, guys. It's uh, 10 minutes to 12. I had to uh, run an errand back to my house. Uh, nice to be the boss, you know, you got things to do, you know, personal things. It's nice, you know, uh, I had to do a little errand. Uh, and uh, so I'm on the way back to the job. I'm surprising them with lunch. 
And uh, I know Daniel and Peter love a certain type of sandwich from Woodrow Deli. It's over on Broadway in Hewlett. Uh, it's kosher deli. And uh, so I got him the uh, grilled pastrami toasted rye with, um, with mustard. So, uh, of course, the pickle and the salad on the side. So, uh, let's see if we can get that reaction when I get back to the, uh, the job. Did I catch you? What's he playing back there? I could not tell you. Not the Why so low? It's a little loud. You can hardly hear it. I can hear it, fine. Right I don't want to hear it. Alright. So, Is the reason why we're not using a drop cloth here? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. This is what happens when the mice are, the kites are away, the mice will play? Come on, I taught you better than that. An excuse, a real, if you were really smart, a great excuse would be like, well, the bed covers it. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I've, I've always planned So I was going to surprise you with what's in this bag for lunch. Mm -hmm. What do you think's in there, Peter? Want to smell it? I I smell it. Doesn't smell like fish, is it, does it? Is it not what we got last time? I think I know what it is. Wait, you wait, you wait, you smell it one more time? Want to smell it? It smells like Chinese. It does smell like Chinese. Really? Yeah. It's grilled pastrami. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in case you're wondering, or if you're wondering what that noise was in the background, the vacuum pump is still on. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, it's time for it to stop that. But maybe we'll finish that after lunch. Let's see what it's at I'm not right going to tell you what it says, uh, but she's low. She's very low. We're going to have some lunch, lunch Daniel. Good. Just good? Very good. Okay. How was lunch? Delicious. Look at this. Wow. You don't got to ask him twice. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to the question is 33. We're going to use that as our answer. 33 microns. Um, yeah. And if I close the valve, some people are going to be like, oh, it's the Mikey Pines. You don't close the valve. You're going to jump up to something. Da, 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 da. All right, and it's still dropping down, okay? The answer is 33. Even with this closed off, we're under 100. I like to see you guys get something under 100. The guys who love to hate. They hate on success. And I'm not even that successful. I just do the right job. I promote transparency and, and professionalism and doing the right thing. I tell it like it is. I'm not for everyone, you know? And uh, if you're going to curse and yell at me about having no hot water, it's still going down. You're going to curse at me about, like, Carlos, the guy who stormed in front of my house and called the cops on me. You're going to, you know, curse me out on the phone, right, and threaten to leave me a bad review? Well, guess what? I'm, I'm just going to, I bite back. I bite back. 63. Still going down. Still dropping down with the clothes off. See? So it's a tight system. He's going to crack that open, then kind of almost there, quickly thereafter take off the, the, the uh, micron gauge. We don't want to get any of those oils in there, but we still got to clean it out, though. It needs to be cleaned, right? I know. Maybe it's easier to just buy a new one. You know what we should do? Sell this on eBay, right? Sell this on eBay. This is The retail is like 400 bucks for this thing, I think. Sell this on eBay for 200 they We'll buy a brand new one. With the, with the, with, and it only costs us 200 bucks for a new one. Makes sense, right? Right. If you guys want to buy this... Nothing wrong with it. It just needs to be uh, calibrated and cleaned, right? We're that lazy. That you can... We're that lazy. We'd rather sell it and buy a brand new one because we're that lazy, okay? Blue Vac Plus Pro. If you guys want this, 200 bucks plus eh, $20 for shipping. And it's yours. I'll ship it to you. And it works. You just saw it work, okay? 200 bucks, it's yours. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, time is your most valuable commodity and asset. Time, Okay. Keep that in mind. Work smarter, not harder. There's a reason why we use the true, va uh, true blue hoses. There's a reason why I use ProPress and ZoomLock and MegaPress. There's a reason why, because time is valuable, especially in my market, New York, Long Island metropolitan uh, market. Expensive here, bro, expensive. All right, 129, and there's the 18. She's running. I'm still trying to figure out why the young teenage son has a Muslim 
prayer rug, and the guy who sleeps here is an Orthodox Jew, but we'll figure that out on <laughs> another video. Uh, there it is. Uh, there's a reason why there's an 18 in this attic, right? Uh, we have no insulation in the ceilings. Uh, I used a thermal imaging camera um, last year. These ceilings are hot as can be. Um, without that running, sorry, with the 18 that was here before running, uh, it gets to be around 72 degrees up here um, on an average when summer day so there's a reason why we kept it at 18 and that's the reason why the house is from built originally built in 1902 uh had one addition and which was that back piece right there which you don't see oh there it is and uh i'm gonna get my psychrometer and we're gonna test the outlet temperature all right i got my digital psychrometer i got a relative humidity of 35 percent uh ambient temperature of looks about 68 degrees let's check our outlet temperature on the fujitsu let's put it right there you know what let me do it in a manner where you guys can easily see the numbers well it looks we're at 49 and a half degrees let's see if we get a little bit lower there 49 and our inlet temperature Keep that there for a little bit, and we'll check on that in a, a little bit. But I know what you're thinking, Mikey Pipes, this is a very tight spot, but that's an attic door. That's an attic door. This is a bathroom. Didn't expect to see this, did you? <laughs> right? Um, so keep in mind, I'm at eye level right now. Okay, so say hi, hi, okay, so it is what it is, we're 66 degrees.